Dylan from Nokia IP Networks Marketing, and I'm here with my colleague Human, uh, Product Line Manager. And today, Human's going to show us a demo on um, quantum safe IP transport. So, Human, so for some background, um, how is quantum computing affecting IP transport? Well, very good question, Ellen. I don't know whether you know what this is. This is actually not the chandelier in my house. Uh, this is what we call a quantum computers. And there are multiple vendors and multiple countries that are actually experimenting with the quantum computer. Now, with regard to the quantum computer, there is one special component in it, and that's what they call a quantum bit. Now, in legacy supercomputers, as you remember, a bit can be a one or a zero. But when it comes to quantum computer, a bit can have many states, one, zero, or anything in between. All this set means that quantum computers are multiple times in magnitude of thousands or million times more faster and more powerful than legacy computer, even supercomputers. What does that mean? That means that quantum computers, they can break certain type of encryption. And these encryption that can be broken by quantum computers are what we call asymmetric encryption. So there's two type of encryption. There is asymmetric and then there is symmetric, as I will explain later on. But as you know, these quantum computers are not uh, available to every single company or every single government out there because they are still experimental. That said, we are still worried in most government entities, federal governments, utilities, that there might be an attack vector here for some of the rogue entities to use this attack vector. So one of these attack vectors is today there's a lot of traffic on internet or even on private networks that are going around. Now, if you can think about it, what about some of these rogue entities start caching this traffic by mirroring them into servers and actually storing them on a large databases? And when quantum computers come available five years down the road, 10 years down the road, they can use these quantum computers in the future to break traffic encryption that is going over private network or internet today. All these important traffic, including my bank account, can get hacked and they can actually figure out what are the secrets that is some of these secrets that are being encrypted for federal government, for utilities, as an example, when it comes to nuclear power, they can start hacking all this stuff five, 10 years from now and start looking at some of these secrets. So this is what we call cash now, hack, decrypt later and it is actually an attack vector. Nokia being very serious about security obviously is trying to be one step ahead of the curve and we are trying to put together components and encryption and stuff, uh, encryption algorithms that would mitigate these type of attacks. Now before we move on I just want to bring this wonderful picture into your attention as you can see there are two gentlemen behind me and these are the gentlemen that actually came up with algorithms to break asymmetric encryption with quantum computers and to actually make symmetric encryption, as I will explain later on, also broken with quantum computers. So when it comes to asymmetric encryption, examples of it is Diffie-Hellman. Another example of it is RSA, which we use in TLS type of encryption, which is, you know, when you connect to your bank account, you use TLS as an HTTPS, that's using TLS. So all those are broken. On the other hand, when it comes to symmetric encryption, where you use for data path encryption, when it comes to AES with a smaller key length, those are also vulnerable because of the second gentleman here. So we are trying to fix all this stuff with Nokia Quantum Safe Transfer. Great. So can you explain to us um, how the Nokia solution works? For sure. So the first thing that I wanted to explain is that when it comes to encryption, as I mentioned, there is two sides to it. There is asymmetric and symmetric. Now you might ask, you repeated this many times, what does asymmetric mean? 
So encryption means that you need to distribute keys between two routers to make sure that your data path is encrypted. To distribute these keys, we use the asymmetric encryption, like the PKI, the RSA for TLS, Diffie-Hellman for SSH, which you log into the nodes with. Those are all broken with quantum computers. When you distribute the keys with the asymmetric algorithms, then you use those keys in the data path to encrypt the data path, so you install the keys that have been distributed by asymmetric algorithm. You install those keys into the data path, and then because the key on both sides is the same key, hence symmetric, then we use the symmetric algorithm like AES to actually encrypt the data path and make it quantum safe. So the actual problem is not the data path because this is already quantum safe. We are using asymmetric keys. The problem is the key distribution method that is broken by quantum computers. Now in Nokia and throughout the industry, there is a good understanding that when it comes to AES-256, a lot of acronyms here, I understand, so bear with me. So with AES-256, which is a symmetric algorithm, those algorithms are quantum safe. Hence, we are using MACSEC, which is a Ethernet Layer 2 standard, and we are using AES-256 at the key distribution layer to distribute these keys with symmetric AES-256 between the two routers. This will solve the problem of key distribution, which was a quantum issue, which was not quantum safe. So now key distribution is quantum safe. And we also use AES-256 on the data path to make sure that any packet that is going between the routers, our routers, are also quantum safe and they are not going to be hacked in the future by these rogue entities when quantum computers are available. Now you might say that, well, great, but MACSEC is already out there. What is so special about NSEC? So given the fact that we kind of realize that MACSEC is already quantum safe on the key distribution level and on the data path, we said, why not start cooking in this protocol into our FP5? So our FP5 has an encryption engine, and that encryption engine uses MACSEC with quantum safe algorithms within that encryption key. As I mentioned, MACSEC is a layer two encryption. So what that means is that when it comes to the MPLS headers, or the IP headers, they are encrypted. So there is no way for a router that receives a MACSEC stream to look at IP header or the MPLS header and start making routing decision based on those headers. This is where Nokia came in and they took it, we took it, I shouldn't say they, one step farther. As you can see here, this is the way that we put the AnySec packet together. So we are using MACSEC in our FP5 technology encryption engine, but we made one critical tweak in it. And that critical tweak was that we are a capable of setting the encryption and the authentication offset in the packet as we will. So what that means is that we are softer we can actually set the encryption and the authentication offset after the MPLS label. What that will give us is that will give us an MPLS packet that the labels are in clear, that is using MACSEC technology, quantum safe, but you can send that MPLS packet into the MPLS cloud and any MPLS router out there is capable of switching this MPLS packet throughout the network from one of our Nokia routers, FP5 routers, to another Nokia FP5 router, and in the middle of any LSR functionality can be 
God forbid, any of our competitors like Cisco's, Juniper's, or Huawei's. This is why we are calling this technology AnySec, because the same MacSec protocol can be used to encrypt layer two, layer two and a half, and PLS, and eventually we can use the same technology to encrypt layer three IP with the IPv4 or IPv6 header into clear. Now, before we go into the demo, I just want to stress one more time that as of now, we are using AnySec to encrypt MPLS packet, namely when it comes to the segment routing, SRISIS, SROSPF. These are the type of tunnels that we can encrypt via AnySec technology by putting the MPLS headers into clear. In the future, we could do service encryption. So each one of the services is going to be encrypted via MACSEC-like technology to be quantum safe, even at the service level. Again, the beauty of the technology of AnySec today with MPLS encryption is the fact that you can start encrypting on the access PEs, FP5 routers, and encrypt the MPLS payload and put that MPLS packet into an MPLS cloud, into an MPLS routing cloud, and any router in the middle, as I said, competition routers even, they can know what to do with that packet, how to switch it from one of our PE FP5s to another PE that is using FP5 technology. This is what we call AnySec in Nokia. Can you show us the demo now? Sure, Elaine. So as you can see behind me, we have three sets of the router. I don't know whether the viewers can see that or not. But basically, we have set up AnySec from the router on the far left side, doing LSR functionality just on the router behind you, Elaine, and eventually terminating the AnySec on another router with the FP5 technology on my right-hand side. So a couple of things I didn't mention previously, which is very important, you need to know. When it comes to MacSec technology, and AnySec kind of inherits from this, low latency line rate encryption is a must. MacSec being a layer two type of transport means that it is very hardware specific type of encryption. And what that means is that it generates a very low latency encryption environment. To give you an example, when it comes to encrypting a packet and decrypting that packet on two separate routers, we are talking about around 600 nanosecond, nanosecond of latency that is introduced by MaxSec. AnySec, being the bigger brother of MaxSec and inheriting all those goodies, means it's going to have very low latency as well when it comes to encrypting router and the decrypting router. Actually, our testing has showed that AnySec latency, depending on different packet size, can be anywhere between 200 nanosecond to 600 nanosecond on two router encrypting and decrypting. So that's number one. Number two is latency. When it comes to the big pipes that most of the operators, when it comes to critical infrastructure, federal government that they are using, we are seeing anywhere between 10 gig to 400 gig of pipes. These are all important traffic that we need to uh, mitigate from attacks from quantum computers. AnySec and MacSec, they can actually do encryption at line rate. So they can encrypt anywhere between one gig, 10 gig, 25, 50, 100, 400 gig can be encrypted via these technologies. Given the low latency, high throughput of these technologies, they make them ideal deployment tools on our FP5, which is like terabit type of NP. Now, in the router behind me, as you can see from the screen, when it comes, we have two separate streams. So these are two separate LSPs. We created a, a flex algo a type of network, which is parallel to each other. And on each plane, if you will, there is an LSP running. And the point that I'm trying to make here is every LSP is pumping 
400 gig of traffic that is encrypted via AnySec. The latency that you see at the bottom is the latency with AnySec and without AnySec. So if you look at that, the top latency is the one with AnySec, the bottom is without AnySec. As you can see, the latency is almost identical, meaning that when it comes to AnySec, the latency that is introduced is completely negligible. So we can actually pump 400 gig of traffic that is encrypted live right now with a very low latency between these two routers and the middle router is just doing LSR functionality, switching the AnySec packet with the MPLS label in clear from one port to the other port. This is why Nokia is shining when it comes to the security because of technology like this, which can actually secure the network today with the appropriate encryption algorithm, as an example, AES-256. And in tomorrow, these type of technologies and algorithms that can actually mitigate quantum computers where they can decrypt these quantum computers, they can decrypt any type, type of traffic with uh, low security means on those networks. Very interesting. Thanks so much, Human. Thank you very much, Ali. And thank you for taking time. <laughs>